Hi everybody, how are you doing? Today I'm talking about Space Jam, a new legacy. I never thought like a video game title like a new legacy would befall Space Jam of all franchises. A new legacy. So the original Space Jam, I did not grow up watching. I had no affiliation for basketball. I had no affiliation to Looney Tunes. And when I saw the movie, you know, Michael Jordan isn't like the greatest actor ever. So I was just kind of like, yeah, this is an enjoyable, fun, dumb movie. You know, it's a one-off. Yes, yeah, I can see the cult classic, but not for me. But it was otherwise an enjoyable experience. Then Space Jam, A New Legacy arrives. And I pretty much agree with a lot of the reception coming out for this movie about it being, you know, like a two-hour commercial because if you don't know already, this movie is about LeBron James and his son is like an aspiring video game designer. But LeBron James is like, no, you're going to do basketball just like me, son. And then he makes a video game and then they get sucked inside a tune world where there's an enemy AI that's called algae rhythm, which is supposed to be like algorithm. A lot of the terminology that they throw out in this movie is just fucking wrong. Um... It's people, it's like six businessmen in an office, like taking a script and just like wiping their ass with it and say, we're going to put this down instead. And they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, so LeBron James has to assemble a team for another basketball game against his son. And he has to acquire them from characters scattered throughout the HBO universe. I guess you could say. So we get cameos from King Kong, Rick and Morty, Austin Powers. It never ends. It, Pennywise. We just see character after character after character. And he's not assembling them for the team. The tunes just have to be scattered for the sake of scattering them and going from world to world for reference to reference. This whole movie, I think there's at least like 378 references. It is a ridiculous amount of references. And considering that you already like half, like it's like a checklist to even, uh, even enjoy this movie. Well, uh, did you like the last Space Jam movie? Do you like Looney Tunes? Do you also enjoy basketball? And it's just like, what kind of a fucking niche thing are they going for? And it doesn't have that kind of like campy 90s uh, vibe that the first movie had whereas the first movie felt like at the end of the day they're trying to have fun the motive for this movie is to cannibalize itself it is literally feeding off of the former movie which was already like a parasite in itself so we have parasites on parasites um that being said um there are things to enjoy within this movie lebron james uh, he's, he's better than Michael Jordan, in my opinion, and I can tell he's trying to have fun with it, he's trying to, like, make this as cool as it can be, and, uh, it's just, you know, a guy, it's still just a sports actor, never did I hear him say a line, I'm like, perfect, and it's not like the script helped, but there are moments, like, I, I could have been like, oh, a comedic actor doing that line would have killed it. Like he makes a Kevin he makes a Kevin Hart joke, and I was thinking, man, if Kevin Hart said that line, it would have been so much better. And again, uh, cameos are worthless if you don't do anything with them. If you just show Rick and Morty, and they act like Rick and Morty for all of ten seconds, you're literally just being like, hey, Rick and Morty's fun, right, guys? I love Batman. I love Rick and Morty, but god damn it, if they don't get the fuck out of this movie, this movie is just a checklist of things needing to be accomplished. It, it it was an ensemble movie, but like never before did I see a movie being ensembled like in front of me. Never did I see all the the chains and wires of the movie, this like butchered script and like this strange acting and all these different things right in front of me. But that being said, uh why why am I not giving this movie like a one out of ten? Again LeBron James is in almost every scene of this, and he actually is fun. And there is, like, a nice 
kid story. Like if I was a kid who liked basketball, I might like this film. If I like LeBron James and I'm 11, this might be a fun movie. There's a lot of um, animation stuff that's actually a little interesting in terms of like them changing the 3D and then back to 2D. Um, and then they have to like change styles. Like they're going to go see Superman. So they're going to change the style a little bit for that. Like there's like a concept like that. That's part of a skeleton of a good movie. So there's like little remnants of filmmaking ability in this film that are scattered throughout. And, you know, I was watching this with a bunch of other people who love the first space jam movie. And I was kind of riding their high and, you know, I, hear them laugh at certain jokes. There's certain jokes that were just cringe, like uh, Granny saying, like, haters gonna hate and stuff like that. That's just cringe to me. I'm sorry. But there are moments uh, that are actually really fun. Um, they're just completely baked in other things. So, like, as much as I like this, like, fun, stupid kids movie, um, the things that offended me weighed those down, and I'm just kind of stuck with this non I, I have no opinion of this movie it is a non-factor for me it just is the most whatever film to exist um if anything i'd be leaning on a four but it was again it's it's an enjoyable film on terms of just like what is fun i guess this is a hard movie to review man this th this fucking movie doesn't make any sense I'm just I'm just gonna get my opinion out. I'm gonna give Space Jam a new legacy a five out of ten. It is a nothing burger. Also, shout out Lola Bunny, who's voiced by my wife, who's Zendaya. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and until next time. With that, I leave you.